initially, when I started working in the waste management space, here's what I got wrong about it. I thought plastic was the biggest problem here in India when it comes to waste. And wet waste, on the other hand, not that big of an issue, right? It just biodegrades, so we can compost it. Turns out that I was very wrong. Uh, I learned pretty quickly that both these preconceived notions of mine were categorically false. And I learned so in interesting ways, starting with our little encounter with Kamle Kaka. In Pune here, we are working on upcycling impossible to recycle plastic waste. Think multi-layered packaging or chips packets for context. Early on in our research, we were looking to source some authentic waste as opposed to just going and buying packets of chips from the supermarket, eating the chips, and then re- and doing research on the packets. That was not, that just doesn't seem very sustainable. We had to find other ways of sourcing this waste. But none of these waste aggregators really wants to sell you just one kilo of waste. It's either 500 kilos or nada. We then started using our brains and decided to approach our friendly neighborhood waste picker, Kamle Kaka, instead. We told him we were doing some research and wanted to buy a sack of chips packets and a sack of single-use plastic bottles. Initially, Kamle Kaka was a little bemused by this. People in fancy buildings didn't generally ask to buy waste. But he came around to it and said he would sort us out. A few days later, the doorbell rang and there stood Kamle Kaka with a sack in front of him. I've never been so excited to see a bag full of waste. But wait, there was only one sack there. What what about the other one? What happened to the sack of plastic bottles that we also wanted, Kamle Kaka? He nodded and replied that he's working on it and will get it to us soon. It's been about eight months um, since then and we still haven't gotten our sack of plastic bottles. I see Kamle Kaka around my neighborhood often and I always smile and wave at him. Sometimes I even ask, Kamle Kaka, amche plastic bottles kote hai? Where are plastic bottles? He just smiles and waves back, nodding his head. Turns out that those plastic bottles that we wanted are a hot commodity in the market. They sell for rupees 30 to 35 a kilo and already have established supply chains. And it's for that reason that 80 to 90% of those plastic bottles get recycled here in India thanks in part to folks like Kamle Kaka, which epitomizes why plastic waste is not necessarily the biggest waste problem here in India. Plastic waste only makes up about 10% of all municipal solid waste in India. In fact, 60% of all plastic in India is recycled versus around 9% in the world. So all in all, is plastic really the biggest problem here? I'm not sure. To be sure, before y'all eat me up alive, plastic waste is problematic when it comes to degradation time and microplastics. But when you zoom out, you have to really consider whether it's the biggest problem or not, especially here in India. Meanwhile, my second preconceived notion that wet waste isn't too bad also went for a toss. Turns out that wet waste is a big issue. 50% of all waste in India is wet or compostable. And also, All of it doesn't necessarily biodegrade easily. It sits in landfills, intermingled with plastic and glass, producing tons of methane, a greenhouse gas 80 times more potent than carbon dioxide. And the kicker is that only 5-6% to of wet waste is actually composted. And it's generally low-quality compost contaminated by high concentrations of heavy metals which doesn't really sell easily or isn't necessarily good for the soil. Wait, so what happens to the rest of the wet waste that's not composted? It just sits and spits methane. Seems like a pretty big problem. As I started dusting off my foreign return status and diving deeper into the waste management situation in India, I realized that it is complex. It's not just a plastic problem or even a wet waste problem. It's a complicated, interconnected mix of environmental, social, and economic issues. And more often than not, it's analyzed only one dimensionally, just the environmental aspects or just the waste picker aspects, maybe with some overlap if it's convenient. I don't want to do that. I want us to look at the waste issue in India holistically. I think that's the only way to really solve it. So let's break it down. Environmentally, about half of all our waste here in India ends up in landfills, which are large dump yards of trash serving as a breeding ground for our beloved mosquitoes and a flourish of pathogens. That's 30 million tons of garbage a year, or equivalent to almost 100,000 Boeing 747s. When this waste ends up in landfills, it piles up and lingers, producing a ton of our favorite greenhouse gas methane, because as you probably remember, 50% of all our solid waste is wet, which clearly isn't as innocent as I thought it was. 
And recall that floral plastic isn't necessarily the biggest contributor here. It's only 10% of all municipal solid waste generated, and most of it gets recycled. And what about glass, rubber, wood, and other such recyclables? About 7%. And e-waste? About 3%. But what about the remaining 30%? 30% is inert. Sand, silt, stones, bones, and other inorganic materials. What happens to that? Nobody knows. For the most part, it also just sits. But this whole waste management issue isn't just an environmental problem. It's a social nightmare as well. Waste pickers, who do such a stellar job with recycling, themselves live multidimensionally poor lives, which means that from an income, health, dignity, and basic education perspective, they're pretty low on the ladder. There are about 1.5 million to 4 million waste pickers in India. Yes, that's a wide range because we honestly don't have great data around it. They are informally employed, no contract, no protective gear, no health insurance, earning only daily wages based on the type of waste they encounter. Their life expectancy can be as low as 39 years of age versus 70 for someone like you and me. They are largely of low caste, belong to minority groups, or are migrants, and a majority of them are women. They earn somewhere between rupees 3,000 and rupees 12,000 a month and live in urban areas that have a higher cost of living on average. And for instance, in the city of Pune, 30% of them have been bitten by dogs. Yes, dogs. The waste problem doesn't stop there. There's another layer, economics. About 80% of the waste in India is untreated, which essentially means that all the economic value that waste has is pretty much wiped out. Globally, 95% of plastic packaging material value is lost annually, primarily because of notorious MLP, multi-layered packaging, think chips package, which is considered impossible to recycle. So wait, why produce MLP at all? Well, it serves a function, food safety and preservation that allows for food to be transported to places it couldn't before. It allows that poor kid in rural India to get his hands on that tasty little chocolate. Again, that doesn't mean that we should continue producing MLP or not look for alternatives, just that this is complex. Also, there isn't enough great recycling tech out there. Recyclers are incentivized to create large centralized factories that process tons and tons of one type of waste. These factories need to be large to be economically viable because the tech just doesn't extract enough margin otherwise. But what about the carbon footprint of transporting the waste to these centralized factories? Also, because of economics, recyclers mainly focus on high-quality recyclables like PET plastic bottles or HDPE detergent bottles. But as we've learned earlier, a lot of this is already recycled. So if new entrants continue to focus on high-quality recyclables, it's mainly going to be pocket shifting, or at best a marginal improvement. And more importantly, what about the waste that's hard to recycle? For instance, 40% of plastic waste is not recycled because there isn't any tech that economically extracts enough value from it. This 40% is normally dismissed because large producers will phase them out. And that might be true, but by when? And what happens to that waste until then? It doesn't stop there. All of these problems, environmental, social, and economical, are interconnected. For instance, about 40 to 60% of the income earned by waste pickers is through the plastic waste they collect. The data isn't great here, but we know it makes up a significant chunk of their income. Now imagine, if you just ban all plastic without taking the income of waste pickers into consideration, you might have issues, right? It's because of waste pickers that our recycling rates are so high and that recycling is cheap. For instance, in Bangalore alone, their efforts help save the government rupees 80 crores or $10 million annually. So we're actually inherently pretty decent at recycling. For instance, 95% of e-waste is recycled in India. Amazing, right? But is it done ethically, safely, efficiently? Probably not. Alternative materials are super hot right now, especially biodegradable alternatives to plastic and bioplastics. But most of these are only compostable industrially or under certain conditions of temperature, humidity, and aeration. But wait, are there even enough degradation centers that do this? And what about reverse logistics, as in how in the world are we going to transport these new bioplastics to the right degradation centers? Also, these bioplastics are sometimes indistinguishable from traditional plastics. So how are waste pickers or even automated segregators going to sort them out? Also, what about the waste mafia? How big of an issue is that? And what about the role of the government? How do politics and corruption fit into this jigsaw? 
and greenwashing? What about changing consumer behavior and personal responsibility? Is that realistic? And what about the 30% of inert waste that nobody seems to care about? Yes, the waste problem in India is layered and nuanced. So how do you go about tackling something so complex and interconnected? There's a way, I promise, so hang on, there's hope. Taking all this in, it became evident that the solution needed to be decentralized, inclusive, holistic, and economically viable. Yes, those are a lot of buzzwords, but stay buzz with me for a second. The overarching goals are clear. Number one, no waste should end up in landfills or on the streets or in the ocean. Number two, waste pickers need to be included with an emphasis on improving their overall well-being over the long run and at least ensuring we don't do net harm to them in the short run. And number three, we need to extract as much economic value from the waste as possible, which itself will inherently drive recycling because incentives. So what would an ideal solution look like? What could be utopia for waste management in India? Imagine if we had recycling centers in each sub-district in India, not too large, not too small. Imagine if these centers recycled all types of solid waste, not just one subtype. Imagine if they themselves were regenerative, zero-waste structures. What if these recycling centers incorporated and, form and formalized the informal sector, waste picker and small-scale aggregators? What if they were adapted to local culture and instead of being smelly, secluded areas, were vibrant and positive work environments where everyone had opportunities to work right alongside waste pickers like Kamle Kaka? What if these recycling centers were also mini manufacturing units with 3D printing farms that were taking a menu of waste items and converting them into high quality, high margin products and materials? What if they had a dedicated monetization team bursting with creativity to keep these centers financially viable, fully exploiting the capitalistic nature of our economy? Maybe these decentralized recycling centers could be supported by centralized research labs that constantly innovate and experiment and distribute margin increasing ethical recycling methodologies to the recycling centers. And then there could be synergies across these centers and labs where you could distribute new 3D printing designs overnight and do mass production in a decentralized fashion locally and immediately all from waste. Look, I know this is much easier to imagine than execute. But we've got to try. And that's exactly what we're doing here in Pune. We're trying. We're trying to reimagine waste holistically. For starters, we're building out a research lab where we're working on deep tech to upcycle impossible to recycle plastic waste, the 40% that is not recycled. And we won't stop there. We want to grow our tech horizontally and scale in a decentralized fashion that aspires to our utopia. We obviously don't think we can do this alone. We need all stakeholders to be involved, from the government and nonprofits to waste pickers and waste picker collectives, and to people like you. To solve this, I feel that you and I and we need to look at it holistically together. We need to acknowledge that this problem is complex and layered, and that there might not be a simple catch-all solution. I feel, we need, I feel we need to be factual and ready to admit that we can be wrong and open-minded enough to evolve solutions that actually work. I feel we need to be focused, prioritizing solutions over making profit. Economic viability does not mean profit maximization. And to do all this, I feel we need to be brave. Brave enough to give up a little bit of our fortune for something bigger. Or brave enough to at least try.